Okay, tov. Good morning. Thank you very much, Raya and Mordechai, for hosting this year and editing it and putting it, Bezrat Hashem, onto our YouTube channel. Thank you, Rabbi Diamond, for organizing this year. And uh, shalom, everybody. I just walked out of Brit Mila, a beautiful ceremony of the circumcision of a young baby that was just born uh, last Friday morning. And um, it's always good to participate in simchas, especially when it comes to a time that uh, Am Yisrael is um, tense, is Am Yisrael is hoping for the best, davening at every moment for our soldiers, for the safety of Eretz Yisrael. So we need a little simcha or a lot of simcha in our lives. One of the brachot that the father of the baby made, first he made the bracha, the mitzvah is to enter him into the, the Brit, the covenant of Avraham Avinu that we read about two weeks ago and last week, Avraham Avinu's own Brit Milah and, and circumcising Yitzchak. But then he said another bracha. It's not the Chabad custom, but it's a beautiful custom. Uh, he said the bracha Shechianu. Shechianu is thanking Hashem every time you do a mitzvah. That is the first time in a while we do Shechianu. What is the meaning of Shechianu? Shechianu, that Hashem brought us to live. The Kimanu, and He brought us to be sustained. The Higianu, and He brought us to be to reach Lizmanazeh this special time. This bracha is usually made on a special chag that it's a special time, a special era, a special opportunity where we <clears throat> where we reached a certain milestone and the time itself that we reached it, that already is something which is special. Of course, the Brit Milah, Brit Milah is at the time when the Brit was made. From here we see that there is something special about time. Time is a creation from Hashem, and we have to sanctify it, just like space. Materialistic objects are all created by Hashem, and we have to use them for the purpose of Kedusha, of holiness. So to time is also special, and we have to use it in a positive way for mitzvot and for learning Torah. This point is very beautifully connected with two verses in our Pasuk, in our Parsha. Parshat Chayi Sarah. The first Pasuk and the life of Sarah Imenu was for 127 years. Mea Shana, Esrim Shana, Vesheva Shanim. And then it says Shnei Chayi Sarah. These are all the years. So what do we see? That all of the years are special, are holy. A little later on in the Parsha, the Torah tells us right before Avram sends Eliezer to find a kala, a bride for Yitzchak, the Torah says an interesting verse, which doesn't seem to have any connection, but it's a very powerful message. The Avraham Zaken. Avraham was old. Babayamim literally means he came with his days. And Hashem blessed Avraham with everything. Now it's a very interesting statement. Avraham zaken babayamim. Avraham was old. Why does that Torah have to tell us that Avraham was old? In last week's parsha, the Torah already told us that Avraham v'saraz kenim. Ba'im Bayamim, Avram and Sarah were old. This was 37 or 38 years before this week's Parsha, because it was before Yitzchak was born. Yitzchak, after that, had the Akedas Yitzchak, the binding of Isaac. How old was Yitzchak? He was 37. So we're talking about at least 37 or 38 years. How old was Avraham when, when the, in the previous parsha, when the Torah tells us that Avraham was old, quote unquote? He was 99. How old was Sarah when the Torah says that, that she was old? 89. So thir at least 37 years later, 
they were obviously much older. So if they were old already when he was 99 and she was 89, how much more so that that they were older 37, 38 years later? So why does the Torah have to tell us again, Vavraham Zaken Baba Yamim? After Sarah's passing, we just finished reading. We just finished reading about Avraham, uh, about uh, Sarah's, Sarah's passing and Avraham burying Sarah in the Marat HaMachpelah. So for sure, Avraham Zaken. Why does the Torah have to save Avraham Zaken? What is the Torah trying to tell us? What is it trying to teach us by saying the word of Avraham Zaken? The Torah does extra words. No word in the Torah is superfluous. So how is it, why is it that the Torah has to repeat again these words, Vavraham Zaken? Then there's a even a, a stronger question. And that is, Torah says, Vavraham Zaken, okay, he was old, granted. Then it says, Ba Bayamim. So freely translated, as we said, Ba Bayamim, he came with his days. What does that mean, old came with his days? How could you have someone that's old that didn't come with all his days? You think he skipped a, f- a couple of years or a three month? Maybe he skipped a few days in the middle? If he got to the age of 138 or 137, whatever it was, he didn't skip a couple of years in the middle. He accomplished. He came with his days. So why does Torah have to say, in addition to the word Zaken, that he was Baba Yamim? So Baba Yamim and also zaken over here must mean something deeper than what it seems to be at first glance. Baba Yamim explains to us that zaken over here does not mean like it meant in last week's parsha. Last week's parsha, it was zaken by the age. Someone that lived a large amount of time, he becomes old. We understand that. But sometimes when we talk about quote-unquote age, we're talking about the quality of life. We're talking about the accomplishments of the person throughout his life. So if you look only at the passport, so you'll count how many days, how many months, and how many years passed since the person was born. And you'll know what it says in the pre- in, in the previous parsha of Avraham v'saraz kenim. But now when the Torah tells us v'avraham zaken, what's the Torah trying to teach us? That he was not only old based on the passport, but he was also tremendously accomplished in his in his days and years that passed. It wasn't just going on vacation or taking a suntan or doing other things which can waste time or looking at his uh, cell phone. When Avram Avinu, he had a day, Hashem gave him another day and another day and another hour, another month, another year. It was full. It was complete. It was totally accomplished. There wasn't one moment in Abraham Avinu's life that it was not that was not full, that was not extremely accomplished, was not packed. Every single moment was filled with filling the will of Hashem. There wasn't one moment that passed by that Abraham Avinu did not say. What is my mission in this world? Why am I here now? What am I supposed to be doing the next minute, the next moment? He was Ba Bayamim. He was not only old, he was Ba Bayamim. He came with all of his days. Every moment was packed jam. And this is a message how we lead our lives at every age, every moment, every day, that we that I Hashem gives us Baruch Hashem in this world. We have to accomplish, and we're here to make a difference. So it's not just a story about Avraham Avinu, but the Torah is from the word Hora'ah. 
from the word lesson. It's here to teach us a lesson that we have to utilize in every moment of our lives. There is an interesting story about a chassid that came to the Alter Rebbe, the Balatanya. And the Balatanya gave him a bracha that he should very bold, I think, that most people would not do. And that is that he put a condition on the Alter Rebbe's bracha. In, in Yiddish, it sounds the best. So first I'm going to say it in Yiddish, and then I'm going to translate it. He said, but not wasteful years. There are some people who live long, but they waste their time. He said, I'm happy to have long life, but I want them to be years of accomplishment, doing more and more mitzvot. That's the point of having long years. And so this teaches us that every age that we are, we should accomplish in our lives more and more quality. That's the reason why Akadosh Baruch Hu put us over here. In order that we should be more accomplished and do his shlichut, do his mission in this world. This is very much connected with his, what's happening now in New York. Right now, there are probably around three and a half to 4,000 of my fellow shluchim, emissaries, in New York for the International Shluchim Conference. Under regular circumstances, I would not be here in Israel now. I would be in New York this weekend, the week, the last Shabbat of, of, of Chodesh Cheshvan, the month of Cheshvan. This Shabbat, we're going to bless the new month of Kislev. And unfortunately, because of the war here in Israel, I and around a thousand of my friends, Shluchim over here in Israel, have not traveled to New York because we feel that it's important to be here with our communities. We, we feel it's important to be here with our families. It's a time of war. It's a time of emergency. And things that you would regularly do, sometimes in times of emergency, you take a rain check. I look forward, Bezrat Hashem, to making up this trip. And as the Rebbe wanted that we should go and we should participate with all the shluchim, there's actually going to be a mini kinos, a mini conference on Sunday for all of the shluchim in Israel. They changed many of the details of the schedule in the international shluchim conference in order in order that we should be able to be part of the of the kinos. So for example, this afternoon at three o'clock, all, all which is eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, when all the shluchim that are in New York will be at the Rebbe's Ohel, we'll be able to connect. It's gonna be three o'clock an hour, approximately an hour before Shabbat. So be very, very moving to be tuned in to the Rebbe's Ohel where I wish I would be now. And would be able to and from far and ask the Rebbe to intercede for the safety and security of Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael the Rebbe loved Eretz Yisrael so much. And at a time like now when we all the shluchim gather together and at a time when we read about in the parsha how Avram Avinu acquired a part of Eretz Yisrael, he bought it, he acquired it. When you buy something in the store, it's yours. It belongs to you, not only materially, but also, I guess, emotionally. Or And so this is a special time. And this connects with a message that we said earlier about Avraham Zaken Baba Yamim. We are shluchim of the Rebbe around the world. Every person listening now to this shi'ir online and everyone who's going to be listening to this for many, many years to come all around the world, 
you should realize that you are also a shliach. You are also an emissary from the Rebbe. Every person has a mission from Hashem that Hashem gives us at every single moment. And we have an opportunity to waste our time or to seek, to look out. How can we make a difference? How can we make the world into a better world? How can we bring Mashiach quicker? How can we make the world into the beautiful gun, the beautiful garden that Hashem has created? Not to allow pogroms, not to allow murderers to ruin the world. Because that's not what the real world is about. The world, Hashem created the world not for that garbage, rather for the good deeds and of, of, of kindness that we can accomplish each and every one of us in our lives. And this is also alluded to in the beginning of the parsha that I mentioned earlier, where we talk about the years, how long Sarah lived. She lived for 127 years. Now, instead of the Torah saying 127 years, it says 100 years, 20 years, and 7 years. So you don't have to be a great mathematician to add up all three numbers. 100 plus 20 plus 7. But then at the end of the Pasuk, it says that these are the years of Sarah. Shnei chaye Sarah. Okay. So why does it say again, these are the years of Sarah? Obviously, it just said that she lived for 127 years. Obviously, these are the years of Sarah. So Rashi quotes from our sages that all of the years were the same. Kulan shavin litova. They're all equal for goodness. In other words, there are some people, and this connects with what we said earlier with the main theme of this year, some people that they just waste time. Or the, some people, as they get older, they're less active, and therefore you can tell on them that perhaps they're accomplishing less than what they used to accomplish when they were younger. And so the Torah tells us Shnei chaye Sarah. All of the years of Sarah were all equally good, all equally accomplished. Just like when she was seven, that's how she was when she was 20, and that's how she was when she was 100, and of course, 127. There was once a chassid, his name was Rabbi Michael, and he told a story about a Yishuvnik, someone that lived in a little town, and he did not know how to read Hebrew or Yiddish. The way he used to work in, you know, in, in Europe, in the olden days, 100 years ago, 200 years ago and more, they had the main cities where most Jews lived. He had the little towns. There were a couple of Jews, sometimes one family. And so they had to bring a malamid, a teacher, to teach the children Torah. And so the malamid, he knew how to read. He knew how to learn. So one time, the yeshuvnik, he got a letter. He did not know how to read it. So he goes over to the malamid. And the malamid tells the yeshuvnik that his father passed away. And the guy... The Yeshuvnik fainted on the spot. So Michal asked a question. Why did only the Yeshuvnik faint? Seemingly what should have happened was that the first guy who reads it, he would be shocked. Someone passed away. Oy va voy. So he should have fainted. He didn't faint. He's just reading the letter. And then he tells over to his friend what it said in the letter. And his friend fainted. That's like second hand. Why did the, the Malamid not faint? The answer is obvious. Because it wasn't his father. Even though the, the Shuvnik was unable to read Hebrew or Yiddish, but the moment that he heard that his father passed away, he fainted right, right away. Because it touched his heart. He couldn't he couldn't take the terrible news. So this is a lesson for us about when we learn about something in the Torah, 
we have to remember that it's ours. Avraham is our father. Sarah is our mother. And when we learn something of we have to take to heart. It's not something removed from us or that it's it's it relates to someone else, doesn't relate to us. It does relate to us. And therefore we have to take it to heart and to emulate the great teachings that that we learn from Avraham and Sarah. So in summary of what we've learned this morning, a small child, for him, what's the most important thing? A new bicycle, a new iPad. But as you get older, you start realizing what is really important in life. You give a baby a $100 bill, they'll crumple it up, they'll rip it up. As you get older, become more mature. Therefore, it's not only that when you're younger, you're more accomplished. When you're older, usually one is less accomplished. The exact contrary. The, the older we get, the more we should realize how much meaning there is in life and how we can add more beauty to Hashem's world. That's what the Rebbe said at his 70th birthday, Fabrengen, and at his 80th birthday, Fabrengen. Now that Baruch Hashem, I've reached such an age, that means that we have to add more Torah and mitzvahs. That's called Baba Yamim, coming with the days, not just to count the minutes as they go by, but to take it to heart and to accomplish more in this world. Here's a great story to finish off. David Friedman, who was the U.S. ambassador to, uh, to Israel just several years ago, he davens in the Chabad house in the five towns in New York. And often he goes with his Chabad rabbi to the Rebbe's Ohel. So someone once asked him, why do you go so often to the Rebbe's Ohel? Oh, to the Rebbe's resting place in Queens. What do you feel there? What happens there that, that draws you? So he said something very interesting. He said, before you walk into the Rebbe's Ohel, you go to the tent right outside, attached to the home. There's a home right outside. They have a big tent where everybody can sit, and you write a letter to the Rebbe. And then you read it in the Rebbe's Ohel. Now you want to write good news, you want to write, ask for a bracha, for the Rebbe to intercede on high on your behalf. And you start thinking about real, about what really matters in life. He said, when I think of what really matters in life, that puts a whole new perspective on, on what I'm doing and where I'm going and what I should be able to accomplish more and more every day. That's such a meaningful story. And with this, I would like to wish all of us Shabbat Shalom. May we all on this Shabbat reading Chayei Sarah and reading the special Pasuk about Vavraham Zaken Baba Yamim. Remember to internalize this message, especially that this is the Shabbat before the month of Kislev. So we say the entire Tehillim. Eretz Yisrael needs our Tehillim. Let's say as much Tehillim as possible. And as we remember the Rosh Chodesh coming up this week, Rosh Chodesh Kislev, it's a great opportunity. It's a great time for us to think about Vavraham, the Sarah, Vavraham Zaken Baba Yamim. This month coming up should be a month full of accomplishments, Torah and Mitzvot, and every minute we can accomplish more and more. Yeshakoach, Shabbat Shalom.